In this video, I am going to be testing Google's Bard and Tropics Claude and of course OpenAI's ChatGPT. In my last video, I ran a few simple prompts between Claude and ChatGPT. I tested if it was censored, which of course it was. I also checked its complex query understanding as well as some other basic test. However, in this video, since Google's Bard recently got a lot of updates, I figure it's only fair to also include Google's Bard. Let me say this first, all chatbots are amazing and they all bring value to the table in their own way. For instance, here are some specific examples of things that Claw 2 is better at than Bard and GPT-4. 1. Generate more creative text formats, such as poems, code, scripts, musical pieces, email, letters, etc. 2. Handle large amounts of data more efficiently. 3. Integrate with Slack and other third-party platforms. Here are some specific examples of things that Bard is better at than Claw 2 and GPT-4. 1. Understand and respond to factual queries more accurately. 2. Access and process information from the real world through Google Search. 3. Integrate with Google Suite. And here are some specific examples of things that GPT-4 is better at than Bard and Claude 2. 1. Generate text that is more human-like and engaging. 2. Answer open-ended, challenging, or strange questions in a comprehensive and informative way. 3. Write different kinds of creative content, like poems, code, scripts, musical pieces, email, letters, etc. Ultimately, the best way to decide which tool is right for you is to try all three models and see which one you prefer. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses, so the best choice for you will depend on your specific needs. For me personally, I like ChatGPT, but that's probably because I was using it all year, and it also has plugins, etc. However, with Claude 2 released, I love the 100k token model. Whenever I need to summarize large data, Claude is my go-to. As for Bard, I am starting to like Bard way more after doing more testing with it. I am finding myself using Google's Bard way more often, especially with the new updates. Speaking of updates, let me run you through some of the Google Bard updates that they brought to the table. In the latest update, Bard has been expanded to over 40 new languages, including Arabic, Chinese, simplified slash traditional, German, Hindi, Spanish, and more. This means that more people around the world can now use Bard to explore their creativity and learn new things. In addition to expanding to new languages, Bard has also been updated with a number of new features and improvements. For example, you can now upload images alongside text in your conversations with Bard, allowing you to boost your imagination and creativity in completely new ways. You can also ask Bard to read responses out loud, which can be helpful if you want to hear your ideas come to life. The image you sent me is a logo for a company called AI Controversy. It shows a blue and red brain with speech bubbles on a black background. Bard has also been updated to detect computational prompts and run code in the background, making Bard better at mathematical tasks, coding questions, and string manipulation. Bard has also been updated to make its summaries more concise and informative, and to make it easier to identify which parts of a response match a source. Overall, this is a major update for Bard. So to kick off this battle, I'll start by asking all three models what are some good prompts to ask to conduct this study. I'm basically prompting the model to give me recommended prompts. I'll write my prompt like this. I am conducting a study on three different large language models. This includes Google's Bard, Anthropics Claude, and OpenAI's GPT-4. I want to find out how they're different, check what they produce, and see how well they work. Could you suggest some prompts that might be good for testing these models? All right, done. Hmm, you know what? After spending some time, thinking, analyzing, and going over the outputs from the three chatbots, I decided to just focus on their strengths, since we already know that they bring value to the table in their own way. By doing it this way, we can truly understand their unique capabilities and how best to utilize each one of them. Because, let's be honest, each chatbot has been designed with its own set of features, and thus, strengths, in mind. So, let's start with Google's bar. Since we are focusing on strengths, for Google Bard, I'd like to demonstrate their two new features, which is Google Lens in Bard and the Read Responses Out Loud, which I kind of did within a sneak peek in the beginning of this video. But anyway, Google Lens is now implemented in Bard. This means you can upload images alongside text in your conversations with Bard, allowing you to boost your imagination and creativity in completely new ways. So, let's upload an image. I'll upload the AIcontroversy.com logo and ask Bard to describe what you see. The image you sent me is a logo for a company called AI Controversy. 
It shows a blue and red brain with speech bubbles on a black background. The text at the bottom of the logo says, I controversy navigating the I revolution. The brain in the logo is split into two hemispheres, with the blue hemisphere representing the logical, rational side of the brain and the red hemisphere representing the emotional, intuitive side of the brain. The speech bubbles coming from the brain represent the different conversations that are happening around AI, from the technical discussions about the technology to the ethical debates about its use. The overall message of the logo is that AI is a complex and controversial topic, and that there are many different perspectives on it. The logo also suggests that AI is a force that is changing the world, and that we need to have open and honest conversations about it in order to navigate the AI revolution safely and responsibly. Here are some specific things I see in the image. The blue and red brain represents the duality of AI, both its logical and emotional aspects. The speech bubbles represent the different conversations that are happening around AI, from the technical to the ethical. The black background represents the complexity and uncertainty of the AI revolution. The text, I Controversy Navigating the AI Revolution, summarizes the message of the logo. I think the logo is effective in communicating the message of the company. It is visually appealing, and it uses simple but effective symbolism to convey its message. I also think the logo is timely, as it reflects the current state of the AI debate. Oh Bard, stop it, you're making me blush. Okay all jokes aside, I have to admit, that is pretty awesome. With the new read responses out loud and Google Lens feature added, Bard is pretty badass. These two new features that they recently added a few days ago on July 13th, 2023 really differentiates itself from Claw 2 and ChatGPT. I want to try it with another image. This time, I want to test it with a nutritional label. I'll ask it, are there any ingredients in here that I should be concerned about? Based on the image you sent, the ingredients in Rockstar Recovery Lemonade are There are no ingredients in Rockstar Recovery Lemonade that I would be concerned about, unless you are allergic to any of them. The caffeine content is 160 mg per 16 fluid ounces can, which is a moderate amount. The artificial sweeteners, sucralose and ACE-K, are generally considered safe by the FDA. However, it is important to note that Rockstar Recovery Lemonade is a high sugar drink, with 63 grams of sugar per 16 fluid ounces can. This is equivalent to about 13 teaspoons of sugar. If you are watching your sugar intake, you may want to choose a different beverage. Overall, Rockstar Recovery Lemonade is a safe and healthy beverage for most people. However, it is important to be aware of the caffeine and sugar content before consuming. Okay, the ingredients were correct, however, I don't know about it being safe, but who cares, I still drink it. Besides that, as I mentioned, these two new additions to Google's Bard are pretty awesome. Now, moving on to Anthropic's Claw 2. With its 100k token capabilities, Claw 2 is amazing for handling large datasets. 100k tokens are roughly 75k words give or take. A typical novel is about anywhere between 60,000 to 100,000 words long. So technically, Claw 2 could summarize full books. That was just to give you a better understanding of how much 100k tokens are. Now, a cool thing about Claw 2 is that you can upload multiple documents at the same time as long as it doesn't surpass the limit of 100k tokens, or the restricted file size. I like that. So what I'll do is find two products on Amazon. I'll go with these two gaming PCs. I'll just copy and paste the data from the two pages and prompt Claw 2. Compare these two gaming PCs. List three pros and three cons for each, and let me know which of these I should buy. Nice! Being able to compare two large documents on the go is a beautiful thing. This is what makes Claw 2 so powerful. The 100k tokens and handling multiple documents simultaneously. Lastly, let's check out OpenAI's GPT-4. Now, ChatGPT has file attachments through Code Interpreter as well as through plugins. However, you'll need to be a paid user to access it. How the Code Interpreter works, it basically writes a Python script to accomplish the task that you ask. So based on the file you upload and what you ask it to do, it will then write a Python code to accomplish that task. What's cool about it is, there is a show work feature where you can see the Python code 
code that it wrote. It is also able to convert GIF to MP4 with basic effects like fade in or fade out as well as zoom and etc. It can create visualization data tables and graphs. Equip it with plugins and you got a lean mean AI machine. For this test, I am going to take my YouTube analytics, upload it to ChatGPT's code interpreter and ask it to analyze my YouTube analytics and let me know what I can do to improve my channel. Wow, it wrote a ton of stuff down. It also created multiple Python scripts, which I am able to see the code it wrote. It first wrote a script to analyze the CSV data. Then it wrote a script to identify the top performing videos. After that, it broke down the information and wrote a script to analyze the correlations between these metrics. It broke down the information and finally, it created a Python script to check if the time of publishing has any effect on video performance. Then it broke down all the information and gave me a detailed summary of things I can do to improve my channel based on the analytics. So there you have it. As we wrap up our exploration, it's clear that each of these chatbots Google's Bard, Anthropic's Claude 2, and OpenAI's GPT-4 brings its own flavor to the world of AI. They have their strengths, and in all honesty, they all shine in their own respective areas. Bard, with its new updates, has shown itself to be a powerful tool for factual queries and real-world data processing, with added creativity thanks to the Google Lens and the Read Out Loud features. Claude 2, with its robust 100K token capabilities, has demonstrated that handling large amounts of data is its forte, not to mention its seamless integration with third-party platforms like Slack. On the other hand, GPT T4, with its more human-like text generation, can handle complex, open-ended prompts and create engaging, creative content. Plus, its capacity to analyze large datasets and provide insights through the code interpreter is highly impressive. At the end of the day, each of these chatbots stands tall in their own unique ways. And the best way for you to decide which one fits your needs is to give each of them a whirl and see how they stack up against your requirements. To all the AI enthusiasts out there, keep exploring, keep innovating, and remember to have fun while you're at it. After all, we're on the front lines of the AI revolution, shaping and experiencing the future in real time. Until next time, this is your guide to the AI universe, signing off. Stay curious and stay inspired.